Today's podcast is brought to you by Precious Metals Advisor Tom Cloud. With nearly 40 years' experience in the precious metals industry, Tom Cloud offers sound advice and the best rates on precious metals. Learn more at ftmdaily.com forward slash gold. Ah, uh, friends, welcome to the Tuesday edition of Follow the Money Daily, a daily podcast dedicated to your personal, spiritual, and financial liberty, found right here every single weekday on ftmdaily.com, standing for Follow the Money Daily. I'm so glad that you're joining us. Thank you so much for tuning in. I know you have so many things to do every single week. It's such a busy life, isn't it? There's so many things to do, so many people to see, so many places to go. So thanks for taking us along with you Uh, right here. You can download our podcast on iTunes or again on our website, ftmdaily.com. We're also on Spreaker.com and Stitcher and tune in. There's all different kinds of uh, places out there that you can find follow the money daily. But again, thank you for tuning in. Uh, My name is Jerry Robinson. I'm your host, the author of Bankruptcy of Our Nation and the publisher here at ftmdaily.com. And as always, I'm joined by my lovely co-host, wife and national director of the Christian Financial Advisor Network, Jennifer Robinson. Jennifer, great to have you this morning. Great to be here on this Tuesday morning. Jerry, we had uh, so much exciting stuff come out over the weekend. Of course, we always release our swing trading report and our penny stock report on the 5th of every month. So July 5th was this last Saturday. And so all of our Trigger Trade Pro members got those reports. And by the way, those who are founding members of Trigger Trade Pro, uh, they found out that they get both reports now instead of just their choice of one report. So exciting news. We put out our June results of both of these reports. Jerry, the penny stock report, we had returns of, gosh, 22% for ticker symbol NG. Uh, ticker symbol FRO was up 17% for this is just during a period of one month. Uh, on this over on the swing trading report, we had ticker symbol GLOG up 27%. I mean, this system works, and I hope all of our subscribers were excited to get these reports and are definitely uh, perusing through them now. Well, with the markets pulling back the way that they have, uh, certainly we are seeing an opportunity for those who uh, want to use those reports to find some entry prices. The markets certainly have pulled back over the last several days. There's a number of reasons for that. There's no immediate cause for concern for investors, but we'll keep our eyes on that. And all of you who have our market barometer uh, service will be alerting you as soon as the market trend changes uh, with a real-time email. So, uh, that's a great, I'd say uh, what we've called it before. It's the best insurance that people can buy, I think, or the cheapest insurance, I should say, for your portfolio, because we keep you up to date on what's happening with the trend in the overall market. Now, friends, uh, it was a long weekend and there was a lot that happened. And as you well know, what we have been documenting on this program for some time and what we have been documenting on our website for many years And even in the book, Bankruptcy of Our Nation, we have been telling you over and over again to pay very close attention to the move away from the dollar by foreign countries, in particular, the Middle East and the oil producers. This is a big, big story that came out over the weekend. I mean, I have a I'm sitting right here on a massive story showing that the U.S. is running out of friends who are willing to pay the price to continue propping up. The failing U.S. dollar, according to a new report by Reuters that was released upon uh, Saturday, July 5th. The headline reads total CEO total, the uh, major uh, French oil company, total CEO calls for bigger euro roll in oil payments. Now, just let that sink in, because what we have here now. Is a European oil chief executive saying, why are we using dollars? I'm going to read you this part of the story. Oil major totals chief executive said on Saturday, the euro should have a bigger role in international trade, although it was not possible to do it without the dollar. And that's true. The 
The CEO was responding to questions about calls by French policymakers to find ways at the EU level to bolster the use of the euro in international business following a record U.S. fine for BNP. Now, that record fine for BNP, you may recall, the U.S. punished the French financial services company BNP Paribas with a whopping $8.9 billion fine. And what what was the fine for? Well, it was because uh, of money laundering that BNP had engaged in that violated American sanctions upon Cuba, Iran, and Sudan. But of course, no one went to jail. It was just a really big, fat $9 billion fine. No banksters uh, went to jail. They're still too big to fail, and they're still too big to jail. But they're not too big to hit with a really nice fine. And this amount that France was hit with, and by the way, BNP is the largest French bank. This amount that they got hit with was much bigger than normal. Massive fine. Since 2009, six banks have been hit with fines related to alleged violations of U.S. sanctions for a total of $3.3 billion in penalties. If BNP agrees to this $9 billion fine, it would represent about three times as much as all the other penalties paid combined. You may remember whenever HSBC was hit with a almost a $2 billion fine back in 2012 over currency trading violations. So the United States does have this track record of doing this. But now with a $9 billion fine on BNP, just another example of how America uses its financial prowess in its foreign policy efforts. It was clearly designed to send a message, this $9 billion fine. And it would seem that the U.S. is selective in who it punishes and wins. So I'm going to talk about that in just a moment. But first, I have a clip here from the French finance minister, Michel Sapin. And he is, and he is being questioned about the U.S. dollar and its role in international transactions. Listen to the statement made by the French finance minister. Roll the tape. We sell ourselves aircraft in dollars. Is that really necessary? I don't think so. Airbus could sell to Air France in euros. It would create stability for Airbus and for Air France. So we can avoid this exchange rate risk. We can diminish financing costs in our economy by labeling more in other currencies. This is not a fight against dollar imperialism. The goal is to find stability, to reflect the financial and economic reality of the world, so that the world can be more stable. But we're looking at the future. It's in the interest of everyone to create a better balance between our currencies. France is in Europe, so it's up to Europe, and to the Eurozone in particular, to lead this argument. So, friends, this is big. This is really, really big stuff. Whenever you have the CEO of Total, the largest French oil company, saying, why are we pricing oil in dollars? And then when you have the French finance minister saying the same thing, it tells you that there is angst in Europe about the U.S. dollar. And as rightfully it should be. I mean, the euro is a standalone currency. Now, back whenever the euro first hit the street, back in the early part of uh, last decade, many economists said that the euro was going to go nowhere. They said it's going to be a, you know, it's, it's a joke. It can't last. And, of course, people who were saying that were pumping up the dollar. Well, it didn't work out that way. Uh, the euro continues to strengthen. The euro continues to uh, prevail. It continues to be a very solid currency that the entire euro zone relies upon and uses. And now, of course, they're looking for more international transactions to be in euros because that will create, again, that permission slip that the U.S. so much enjoys today. But you look around the world and you'll find that everyone is using the dollar. And people are beginning to ask themselves, why? Back to this Reuters story, Total CEO calls for bigger euro role in oil payments. He adds in this article, and this is a quote from the CEO of Total, there is no reason to pay for oil in dollars. 
And then he added uh, the fact that oil prices are quoted in dollars per barrel, but that did not mean that payments actually had to be made in that currency. So these are fighting words from France, uh, no doubt about it. And it's not as if Europe is necessarily happy with us. If you take a look at what happened over the weekend as well, there was a massive um, break of a story about a double agent operating underneath CIA direction and NSA direction in Germany, providing printouts of very uh, top secret information from the German government and providing it to the United States for money. Uh, two or three times, this individual who was working in the German tel- intelligence agency was uh, was met by a an American who delivered him 25,000 euros uh, at a time. And in exchange for that, he was providing the United States with a weekly intelligence update on the top secret dealings in Germany. And Germany, for the very first time, has reacted since 1945 Headline out of the independent UK, Germany to spy on U.S. for the first time since 1945 after a double agent scandal. So you have France barking up the Dollar Tree saying, why are we using dollars? You have the total CEO, one of the largest oil companies in the world, one of the largest in certainly in Europe, saying, why are we pricing oil in dollars? The CEO. And then you have Germany saying, we're going to spy on the U.S. because we can't believe that they are paying people within our government to provide intelligence about our top secret information. So this is the first time since the Nazis that Germany has uh, stated its plan to spy upon the U.S. Now, as I was saying earlier, this is just another example here with uh, the United States slamming BNP, the bank in, in France, Just another example of America's financial foreign policy efforts. It was clearly designed to send a message. And it would seem that the U.S. is selective in who it punishes and when. You may recall, just before this fine was levied on BNP, uh, before it was determined and levied, the French had discreetly agreed to sell warships to Russia. And the United States pushed back at this. And here is President Obama just a few days ago talking about it. Roll the tape. I have expressed uh, some concerns, uh, and I don't think I'm uh, alone in this, uh, about uh, continuing significant uh, defense deals uh, with Russia at a time when uh, they have violated basic international law. Uh, and the territorial integrity of, and sovereignty of their neighbors. Uh, so uh, President Hulon understands my position. Uh, I recognize that this, this is a big deal. I recognize that uh, the jobs uh, in uh, France are important. Um, I think it would have been preferable to, to press the pause button. Uh, President Hulon uh, so far has made a different decision. Uh, and. That does not negate the broader cooperation that we've had with France uh, with respect to its willingness to uh, work with us on sanctions uh, to discourage uh, President Putin from engaging in further destabilizing actions and hopefully to encourage him to move in a more constructive direction. The Washington Post this week adding to this uh, with a headline entitled Putin accuses the U.S. of blackmail over French warship deal. Russian President Vladimir Putin has accused the U.S. of blackmailing France over the French contract to sell warships to Russia. Putin's claim is a reference to the $9 billion levied against France's largest bank, BNP Paribas. And there you have it. Here's what Putin told uh, Russian diplomats on Tuesday. He said, we know about the pressure which our U.S. partners are applying on France not to supply the warships to Russia. And we even know they hinted that if the Russians don't deliver the mistrals or the warships, they would quietly get rid of the sanctions against the bank or at least minimize them. And this is very clear from what we are seeing from the United States. I mean, you have uh, Barack Obama right there telling you that uh, they are extremely concerned over France's warship sale to Russia. Does that explain why France received the, the, the strongest slap on the wrist that any of the other banks have received up until this point. 
there is an alignment of nations who are extremely anti-dollar. They're using dollars, but they are realizing that this system isn't really worth defending. And friends, we have been using the dollar for so many things for so long that it's just become almost just de facto. Of course we use the dollar. But why shouldn't France use the dollar? Well, the better question is why should France convert from euros to dollars to buy planes or to buy anything for that matter, oil? They have a euro. Why do French companies have to take their euros, turn them into dollars to do trade with one another? let alone with other countries. So this is an unsustainable system, and this is what we've been pointing at for so long. And I'll tell you what is happening. If you pay attention to the mainstream press, you know what they're telling you about right now? They're telling you all about the border. They're looking at the border, and they're talking about the border. So at least some of them are. They're paying attention to what's happening there, and it's no doubt a mess. It's a total crisis. I don't know if the administration in Washington is behind this or not. Some say that they are. I think it's pretty obvious that regardless of whether they initiated it, they are winking at it. And I have some pretty strong thoughts about it, but I'm going to hold those because here's my point. To me, this story about the border, even though it's important and even though it's wrong, even though what's happening down there is is just crazy, in many ways, it is diverting the American people's attention of what's really happening right now. Our allies in Europe are saying, why are we using dollars? Friends, do you realize what this means? Do you realize how this ends up? The absolute devastation if these countries begin to move away from the dollar? You have Germany wanting their gold back. They can't even see it. The German people are outraged. 27% of the Amer- of German people actually view the United States with some sort of favorability. 70% of Germans... Uh, are not happy with what's happening in the United States. As well, they should not be. How many Americans are happy with what's happening in the United States? Now, Germans are being spied upon by the United States. Uh, We're paying people to spy upon Germany. We are hacking off our allies or our so-called allies. And this is exactly what Merkel, the Chancellor of Germany, is facing. If she continues to do nothing about the overt intrusion by the United States into Europe. She is going to be viewed as completely ineffective in leading. Uh, Here you have Russia and China diligently trying to move away from the U.S. dollar, and now you have the United States giving its own allies, sticking them with $9 billion dollars, in fines because they are promoting Russia and helping Russia. And now Germany says we're going to spy upon the United States for the first time since the Nazis. And the American people are being told to look at the Mexican border. It's a distraction. Now, I'm not saying that it's not a good thing. I'm not saying it's a good thing. I mean, what's happening down there, like I said, is is, it's terrible. But how interesting that the entire nation's attention is diverted as we are seeing absolute unbelievable. I tell you, I've been watching this for years. I have never seen the level of talk that we're seeing, certainly never out of a CEO's mouth from France of an oil company. They know better. Certainly not from uh, Merkel and her administration, who are now calling the United States their so-called ally. And very few people have even questioned the concept of pricing things in dollars around the world. They just assume that it's okay. And so people cannot imagine not using the dollar, but they don't understand that the yuan and that the euro are able to stand on their own. Another thing that these foreign countries may realize is if they want the United States to stop spying on them, maybe they should stop lending us money. Because we don't do this out of our own pocket, right? We're not spying on 195, 197 nations with money in our own pocket. We're borrowing from China to spy on China. We're borrowing from Europe to spy on Europe. And at some point, those countries are going to say, is this really the smartest way to spend our money? No doubt about it, they're currencies they want to promote. Europe is going, over the next uh, couple of months, you're going to see a major push in Europe to begin getting more international transactions being made in the euro. 
This, of course, is going to lead to a further destruction of dollar demand. And dollar demand around the world is required for our way of life to continue. So here is the bottom line. You connect all these dots and you see what's happening. We haven't even talked about Israel. You got 40,000 troops that are calling up in Israel right now. Big, massive thing. Shadows, shadows of World War I in, in Israel. I want to talk about that maybe later this week. But some real interesting uh, things happening in Israel right now. 40,000 troops being called up. You got ISIS in Iraq. Of course, that thing is just continuing to spiral out of control. You have tensions rising continually between the United States and uh, in the West and uh, Russia over Ukraine. And now we have these unbelievable headlines coming out about the dollar that many people don't really understand what they mean. And let's just give you the bottom line here. What happens whenever everything comes to a stop? Everything comes to a halt. What happens whenever we begin to see nations not just talking about why are we pricing things in dollars, but actually starting to take action and begin to price things in their own currency? Well, the first thing that's going to happen is that all of these excess dollars around the world that are held in foreign nations and foreign nation central banks, today 60% of all central bank reserves are U.S. dollars. What happens when that number goes down? Well, those dollars have to go somewhere. If they don't end up underneath a mattress over in uh, Russia or China, they're going to end up coming back here to the point of origin where they can be used because other countries are using their own currencies. Imagine that. So there's other currencies that are being used. And so these dollars come back to the United States, a flood of U.S. dollars coming back. And this causes the Fed to lose their ability to print more dollars to solve America's economic problems. Do you see how serious this is? The Fed has had one solution to every problem. Every single time that it sees a nail, it's so happy that it has a hammer. But even if it doesn't see a nail, it still pulls out the hammer, right? 1987, case in point, the market crashes. Greenspan's just coming into office at the Fed. What does he do? He cuts interest rates. In the early 90s, we had problems. He cuts interest rates. 94, you have the tequila crisis, tequila hangover, and uh, the, the peso crisis in Mexico. He cuts interest rates. 1997, the Thai bot, East Asia, suffers a, a you know, massive correction in the markets. And what does the Fed do? Well, they cut interest rates. In 1998, the Russian ruble collapses, and the Greenspan says we got to cut interest rates. In 2000, there's a uh, dot-com bubble crash, right? Remember that? What happens? What does the Fed do? Well, they cut interest rates. That's all they do. They, they always cut interest rates. And when you cut interest rates, you have to print money. It's the same thing. And since the 2008 crisis, we have printed trillions and trillions and trillions and trillions of dollars, and we've kept interest rates extremely low. And the only reason that works is because other nations will hold those dollars because they need them. And here you have European countries, not not Iran and Russia, right? I mean, the usual stooges. You got Europe saying, we why are we using dollars? We have our own currency. Okay, so when these dollars begin to come back, the Federal Reserve will lose its ability to print more dollars to solve America's economic problems. And this is very important because, again, without that permission slip, what does the Fed do whenever there's a problem? Can they print more money? Not without creating hyperinflation because those dollars are not going to flee out of the country and go into foreign bank accounts to be held so that they can buy a sandwich down the road. Right? Because they don't need a dollar. They have their own currency. So they're going to keep using their currency. And when the U.S. prints dollars, where are those dollars going to go? If they can't leave the country because there's the, the foreign demand has diminished, then they have to stay here. And if they stay here, you won't like that because the price of everything goes up. That's why we've been able to hold off and stave off inflation for so long is because everybody wants the dollar around the world. But China and Russia and now France, Iran, and all of these other countries, and Germany probably, getting upset about the dollar. So if this were to happen, and I say if, it's more of a question of when, what would happen is the Fed and the U.S. Treasury Secretary would probably have a big meeting to determine the best course of action, and that would involve an immediate dramatic increase in interest rates. And the reason is, is because they want to reduce America's money supply. There'll be too much money in the system. 
Then after that, uh, hyperinflation ensues, right? So hyperinflation uh, truly strikes at that point, and the Fed just cannot raise interest rates fast enough to keep the inflation rate down. This, of course, this inflation will impact uh, all oil-related prices, gas prices, going to reach outrageous levels, commodity prices, food prices, everything, everything that you use. Washington uh, would then soon realize that the total amount of money in the system would have to be dramatically slashed even further, which would mean even higher interest rates. Then the American public would begin to demand answers. And I'm sure that we'll see during that time period, Fox News will be blaming uh, Obama and Obama and MSNBC will be blaming the Republicans in the uh, in the Congress. Jerry, do you think during this time of hyperinflation, while the Fed is trying to raise rates and they can't do it fast enough, do you think the government will likely impose price controls? Oh, no doubt about it. I mean, can you imagine a president running and saying, you know, if I'm president, then, you know, everybody will never have to pay more than three dollars for a gallon of gasoline. Right. Or I mean, at some point, price controls, which everybody knows should know is a bad idea will eventually uh, go for it. And I think that would certainly happen during this time. Price control should probably be factored into this. That's a very good point. But what's going to happen is is uh, because people don't understand what this stuff is, they don't understand how this money system works, this was designed to fail. And so it cannot last. And we're going to see people just lashing out in all the wrong directions. Uh, the left is going to blame the right. The right's going to blame the left. Both political parties, uh, the leaders of them, are going to start blaming the Federal Reserve. Again, for the first time, you'll finally hear, you know, people talking about the Fed. I remember whenever uh, Mitt Romney uh, was running against Barack Obama in 2012. Go back to the debates and see if you can find, even just look at the transcripts. If anybody can find the word Federal Reserve, the phrase Federal Reserve in any of those transcripts, I'll give you $100. Just send it to me. I want to see it. I went through them. I couldn't find it. They never mentioned the Federal Reserve, right? So they're not going to talk about the Federal Reserve. They don't want to debate the Federal Reserve until until it be- becomes too late. Then all of a sudden, the Fed's to blame. Well, uh, on top of that, people with adjustable rate debts are going to get crushed. Massive layoffs are going to occur as businesses will be suffering from high interest rates. All this massive overinvestment that we've had in these low interest rate in this low interest rate era is going to backfire asset prices across the board. And here's where it gets real, friends. Asset prices across the board will eventually begin to plummet in value. This is the worst part of this decline. It's not the hyperinflation. We're going to make money off the hyperinflation, right? We're going to own gold. We're going to own silver. It's not that that I'm worried about. It's what happens afterwards. Because after you lose the permission slip, and after people have told you that they're going to use their own currency, then how do you get back to a place where you have the same demand that you have now? And if you don't have the same demand for your currency, then you can only have less demand for your currency in this case. And that means that with less currency in the system, everything will have to cost less. I think definitely never to these levels again, like you said, because with not enough demand available for the dollar, then the Dow can never be back at 17,000. The S&P can never be back in 1900 because this is completely artificial due to the amount of dollars in the globe. That's right. And the disease that America suffers today is this concept of the present must be the minimum. If the present is not the minimum today, uh, people get very upset. They get very upset. As soon as the market dips for a week, watch everybody freak out, right? Oh my gosh, the market's going... Well, it's supposed to go down. It's supposed to move in a cycle, right? But we can't have it go down. It has to always go up, 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 up. Why is my 401k statement not going up? Why is my uh, house value not going up? Why am I not getting a raise? Why? But then when it comes to prices, well, why are prices going? Everything is going up. And that's the problem. People have come to expect prices to go up. What happens when we end up in the system where prices go down? Well, people think that's good. But again, your income goes down. Your house value goes down. Your 401k value goes down. And this is real serious because this happens all throughout history. It happens all throughout history. And we're getting ready to hit it. We are at the apex or at the peak. We're at the zenith of dollar demand. It cannot possibly get any stronger than it is now. There's not enough people on the planet to make it stronger. 
It can only uh, recede from here. And based upon the comments we're seeing from now the CEO of Total in France, it's very clear. They want a plan B. The Europeans want to begin moving towards more euro transactions. And why would they want that? Because, again, that gives them the permission slip, right? If they can create and generate more demand for their euro, then they can print more euros, and that gives them a permission slip to grow and grow and grow, and their asset prices go up, and everybody's happy, and they keep reelecting the same politicians over and over again like they do here. But finally, amid the financial carnage, an economic recovery really will begin to take hold in America. It really will. But this new American economy is going to be tremendously smaller, much more humble, and it'll be due to a drastically reduced money supply. The writing is on the wall, my friends. It is here. I don't have a date. I don't know when this is going to happen. But whenever you have headlines the way we're seeing now coming out of France and Germany, extremely mad because of what we've done, you know that we're getting close. It's just a matter of time. Well, Jerry, speaking of the dollar around the globe and thinking about it back here at home, I have to slip in this one last headline before we move on to the markets from Bloomberg that the U.S. Navy warns it can't meet 30-year funding needs uh, for surface warships and a new class of nuclear attack submarines that they are working on for 2025 to 2034. Uh, the, the latest 30-year shipbuilding plan is out from the Navy. And, Jerry, they cannot meet the funding needs. Who would have thought they are going to need more dollars printed by the Federal Reserve for what, their shipbuilding? What do you mean? We can't, uh, we can't afford this global empire of bases that we have, the 700-some-odd uh, bases in 130 nations around the world and the Navy? It's a terrible headline to come out after you are busted spying on your quote-unquote ally, Germany, and after France says, why are we using the dollar, and after Russia and China are trying to build an alliance against you, and then you just come out and say, we can't afford our military. Well, that's that's not good. That's we not we good. better be able to afford it now that we have made everyone mad. <laughs> no kidding. Okay, well, over to the markets for today. Jerry, the S&P 500 is down about seven-tenths of a percent at 1963 today. Gold is at 1316 flat for the day. And silver is up slightly to $21.03. Yeah, everywhere we look today, the markets are down. There's a lot of, a uh, little bit of, people People are scared. You know, they're scared. There's uh, there's fear in the market. There's overall concern. Citibank has already come out saying that we're due for a severe pullback. Uh, other banks as well have made similar claims. And so there is some general anxiety in the overall markets. Gold and silver, however, are managing to hold on and actually climb higher. Uh, as it does become apparent that inflation is finally creeping into prices. And based upon the uh, latest from the Commodities Future Trading Commission, the CFTC, we see that there has been quite a substantial increase in speculative gold positions uh, as well as silver positions. So speculators are back in the market for gold and silver, which bodes well for the prices of both of those metals in the days ahead. Thank you so much for allowing us into your life each and every day. And as always, I leave you with this final word, this time spoken by the Danish philosopher and one of my favorites, Soren Kierkegaard, when he said, People demand freedom of speech as a compensation for the freedom of thought, which they seldom use. Just something to think about. Remember, when you want the truth about the global economy, just follow the money. We'll see you right back here again tomorrow. Until then, God bless. All of the information contained on Follow the Money is strictly for informational and educational purposes. The views and opinions of our guests and sponsors, including Tom Cloud and Jay Peroni, are their own and do not necessarily represent the views of FTMDaily.com or Robinson Media Group, LLC.
Jerry and Jennifer Robinson do hold their insurance licenses and may offer consulting on life insurance and fixed retirement income products. Jennifer Robinson is an investment advisor representative with Faith Based Investor LLC. Remember, never do your financial planning through podcast or radio. It's your money. Be wise. Do your due diligence and always consult a trusted financial professional before making any financial decisions.